I'm never a C, and strangely enough, I have the music on this time. In fact, I just enabled it just now because I just don't usually have the music on and usually listen to my music in the background. But I have my, I don't know, six monthly cast bringing you a highlight of um, a game that I've played today. I may have said in previous videos that I tend to spend a whole afternoon on the StarCraft rather than odd few hour sessions here and there. With the exception of me playing maybe the odd 3v3 every now and then. Just to, you know, just after a hard day's, hard day's work. 3v3, bit of silliness, really, really tops it off. But yeah, this is the highlight of the game. It's in fact the first game I played today. Um, get, gotta get back into the groove of observing because I let my hands go and the screen just tilted there. <laughs> which is sad. Um, but yeah, I've talked enough to fill up the dead space at the beginning. Um, you can see something funky is going on here. And it might be explained due to the fact that I'm actually playing random. I know it looks like I'm playing process, but this is actually the random race. And I've uh, opened fairly normally. I think this is normal. Um, I guess it's a quite apparent that I'm not going for any tech play because I don't take the second gas. I feel like a lot of players get the second gas before expansion, I'm not sure. I haven't been studying pro games enough. I've watched WCS and, and such, but I haven't really properly sat there and looked at the timings and everything. But yeah, here we go. And we're really getting into the deep, the, the uh, swing of things now with the first expansion coming on in. Getting to see what's going on here. Um, he's, has he skipped all his units? Does he have a marine? Units. No marines, he's gone straight for tech. Some, some sort of rush going on here. On here. Um, if you didn't know, let's look at the <laughs> it's a bit late to be doing the names, but here we go. I'm actually Nova and I'm in the bottom right, if you hadn't already guessed. And the top left is some random no-name fucking Terran with the, from the clan Turby HD. And he's got a name so large it won't fit on the, on the scorecard thing. Let's put that away, that is filthy. And um, let's have a look at what our opponent's doing. It's a starport going straight into Hellions. And this would be the sort of way I'd play out Terran versus Terran rather than Terran versus Prosos. So this is getting a bit getting a bit filthy here. And um, he really needs to get damage done. If he's not expanded by now, he needs to kill substantial workers of these Hellions here. And in fact I'm walking straight into him. Is this the first time he's looked at me, actually? It's actually the first time he's looked at me. He's done this blind without even seeing my race. So he's probably pretty sad to see that I'm um, Prosos here. Though he did clear off the Adept without losing anything. Sadly for me. He's going to have to repair this. which is going to delay his push with these Hellions, which is nice. And here we go. 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 We can see it in two locations in the production tab and... Right in front of us, <laughs> it's the fusion core, and I walked down in with the mothership core. Um, I lost my, my adept, but I did see that he'd only made Hellion so far, which prompted me to go straight into his base. And he has nothing. He's getting mines, and he's getting a Viking, which is the correct response here. But probably why you don't. It's not very good to go Hellions against Prosos. I mean, rush them anyway, because he's now lost. Uh, let's, have, let's have a look at the units lost. Lost five workers so far. Mine does strike the... Other shit, of course. But it's going down. Meanwhile, here come the Hellions. Gonna try and put on some pressure here. But because I have inflicted eight kills to him now... <laughs> nine? Oh, sorry. Sorry, eight. I'm trying to yeah, forget about the Hellions. Um, He really needs to make up a loss of workers. He needs to, really needs to shorten this worker lead that I have. And he's sort of done it. He's killed quite a few. I'm still ahead by four and I have an expansion though. And he'd really want to be at, at least even with me considering he hasn't even started his base yet. <laughs> oh dear. So that's not nice. Ideally he'd want to be oh, four or five workers above me because I, there's... Um, 
because I'm going to be able to make probes two at a time, which is not very good for him. Ideally, he'd want me about 12 workers right now, so he's really quite quite far behind. Let me try and figure out the hotkey for worker skill. There we go. So a total of 11, oh, 17 killed by me. How is that even... Wait a minute. How is that even possible? Oh, no, no. I'm looking at this wrong. Sorry. I've killed eight. Considering my opening wasn't really supposed to deal any worker damage, because it was just a fast expand, pretty much. Well, standard expand. Um, eight is pretty impressive. 17 for him is what he'd want, but those workers killed by me has meant that he's not actually in as good a position as he should be after that many kills. So he's going for the BC production, straight into that. It's just mines and BCs so far. Has he got anything else? And a Viking, and a Viking. But he needs he needs to build that Viking to kill my logic core. That's the only real reason he built that. Quite a pain for him, of course. And of course, he doesn't need this um, barracks, so he's just floating that around. Um, hopefully, going to upset my pathing. I think that he wants. That's what he's hoping for there. Um, unfortunately, though, I have an observer, and I'm actually clicking on his mines instead of just a clicking. Disgustingly, that kills a 300 damage. Jeez. Disgustingly, he can one shot immortals with his with his battle cruisers here. And the fights aren't going to go too well, and I have to get out of there. Luckily, recalling, so I didn't even I didn't lose the mother score and all of my store because I saved a mighty one. But uh, after that little skirmish there, I know exactly what he's doing. I can see that there's a massive commitment to the battleship. Uh, sorry, battle cruisers here because I saw the barracks sitting up here. Uh, I didn't see any bio units. I just saw that's all I saw. That she one battle cruiser. And. And yeah, so what is my choice to deal with this? Um, after my expand, I went straight for a robo, as you could probably tell, because I had an immortal there. Um, but I've also gone for Blink, I've got for plus one, and I've added on an extra four gateways. Bring me up to... Um, how many gateways have I got here? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, I'll bring it up to six, I think. Have I, got, have I counted right? Have I counted right? One, two, three, four, five... Six, yes, six gateways I'll have there. And what I've also done, because I know that the battle um, cruisers are going to struggle to put pressure on me straight away, I've gone straight for this expand here. However, hilariously enough, um, counterintuitively, the attacks have started much earlier with this tier 3 army. Um, he's just gone straight into my mineral line and started attacking. Quite a risky play because he's used the ability to warp into my base, but then he's, he's going to be on cooldown for a while before he can actually um, get out again. So because I was halfway across the map, I decided to keep going. I knew that he'd have no army, so I've just Shreked his entire base here. <laughs> um, tactical Shreking to counter his tactical jump ability. Um, Unfortunately, though, because of a combination of the Amata Cannon and the Tactical Jump, um, engaging this army is going to be very difficult for me because um, he's going to be able to shoot down some of my units um, and then run away without actually losing anything. So it's not going to be cost efficient for me to trade. In fact, uh, luckily that I, I built this base here, um, I was just able to transfer my workers and go for his base. So my strategy here at this point is going to be a disgusting range on that. Oh my goodness. My strategy here is just going to be shoo away the battle cruisers. Uh, I'm not going to be able to trade very cost efficiently here because he's just going to be able to get out for free. But I'm going to try and uh, mine while he doesn't, basically. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep shutting down this base and expand as much as possible and try and win that way. My army's going to be able to beat his army, though it's going to be less cost efficient. It's just a very strange situation to be in, so I need to be very active with my units and killing killing a bunch of shit. Observer here. Be able to spot exactly when he moves out so that I can move in and 
uh, take him on in that exact moment. His battlecruisers are just so slow though that he's unable to get to his base and defend in time. And again, he's been able to destroy those stalkers instantly without taking any losses. I probably could have committed and almost killed that, but then he could have just tactical jumps away before it died, so no point in that, I just ran away. And here we go, just warping in straight again. I'm across the map, unfortunately. Uh, there we go, my three stalkers there, I've only got two stalkers here. But he did warp on top of pylons, and focus on overcharge, he's going to be able to shoot those away. And, like I said before, it's a risky move this, because tactical jump in, he can't get out again. Two battle cruisers here, being the most ridiculously cost efficient units you ever see. And he has he has one Yamato cannon ready. And he walks in his number one. He's got two Yamato cannons ready. Can three battle cruisers take on two pylons and is that eight stalkers? Probably not. Probably not, because he's not using his no, Yamato cannon, which doesn't help. Being a bit slow. Um I would like to... I, I doubt his APM is very... It's, it's 110. What is he doing to not be able to use a Demasi Cannon in the time? I feel like this... He doesn't have that much to be doing, but he has enough APM to do it all. Interesting stuff there, guys. Holy shit. So basically... Um, he could have done this a lot better. I feel like... He, if instead of just walking straight onto on top of my base, and instead he tried to go take some tactical routes, perhaps send some battle cruisers this way, some battle cruisers this way, harass, and then when I come to defend, tactical jump out, and keep doing that as much as possible over and over again. And I might have had more success with that, but still, it's very difficult to win. Um, when you've got battle cruisers against stalkers in small numbers, because, you know, like you can see there, I could just walk in, kill his shit, and then run away a lot faster than he could kill my shit and run away. So... Yeah, I hope you don't like that game. It's a bit of a wonky one. Um, hopefully I find someone doing this build that executes him a bit better. And I'd love to bring that, but I can't. Because this sort of style is used so infrequently. Partly, partly because it's crap. But partly because people aren't fun. And, and I think there's more the people not being fun part. That, pe that this build isn't being used. So I hope I'll find some fun people in the future. Yeah, so yeah. Again, I hope you like that. I'll see you later. Goodbye.